مباشرة هناك تكاثر خلوي شديد An explosion of cellular multiplication takes place immediately after birth with the aim of making the newborn baby grow. This myriad of cells reproduces very quickly resulting in a great number of cells which need iron. If we take a biopsy sample of blood from a little child during this period of enormous growth and send it to a laboratory without informing them of who the sample comes from, the results may well be interpreted as indicating a great multiplication of cancerous cells. If the small child in question kept growing like this, he or she would become as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Once he or she has finished this first phase, however, there are controlling cells that will put an end to this type of growth. During the period under discussion, the infant needs iron which cannot be obtained from the medulla. The body profits by recycling old urethrocytes and phagocytes, which are blood cells, to extract the iron from them via the liver and the spleen. This phase of growth lasts until an individual reaches the age of 21, where growth stops and the old erythrocytes begin to gather in the back. This is why cupping is necessary, as these old erythrocytes become redundant, at the same time hindering and obstructing the flow of new cells originating from the medulla. It was proved by the best analysts and laboratory technicians that the blood of menstruation resembles the blood extracted by cupping from the withers, the upper part of the back. Furthermore, we notice that men are afflicted with liver cancer six times more than women before menopause whereas after menopause, women are affected by this disease with the same frequency as men. So we see how menstruation is a natural cleaning process which benefits women. In addition to this, men are often afflicted in much greater numbers by cancer of the colon, stomach cancer and leukemia than women before menopause, with numbers evening out after menopause. Therefore, bearing this natural cleaning process in mind, we recommend cupping for women after menopause, but consider that such treatment is not necessary before it. Someone may ask about the secret hidden beyond cupping, the simple operation which cures serious diseases that have puzzled medical experts. If we look at the mechanism according to how our circulation takes place, we can understand the effect of cupping and appreciate its advantages. The blood system is a world in itself, it is the basis of life, it ensures that all the major organs of the body are connected together, uniting their functions and their underlying purposes. It provides the body with fuel, removes the excrement and supports the immune system. Sometimes weakness and laziness besets this system, which is so complex and so important, and other times diseases attack it. It's composed of the white cells which represent the body's defense system against any attack. They number between 4 and 7 million cells per 1 millimeter cubed. There are also the red cells, about 5 million, again per 1 millimeter cubed. These cells carry oxygen which is necessary to produce energy for all cells and tissues and remove the carbon dioxide from them. 
The red cells are produced in the medulla, then they move to the blood where they keep functioning for 120 days. When they age, they lose their vitality, flexibility and ability to work, as well as their form and they stick to each other. Either the current of blood drives them to the liver and spleen, or they find placid places in the circulatory system and settle there. They will not find a less active place than the upper back, as it is a wide area where the net of capillaries are particularly abundant. This has a great effect in slowing down the speed of the blood and consequently these cells gather in this place. The problems of blood clots, embolism, occlusion begins here. This was confirmed by a Japanese medical team who conducted research on the blood. They said that any problems in the blood are reasons for our different diseases. Therefore, cupping appears to be an obvious solution for all these problems. If we look for the mechanism of the cupping cure, apart from what was mentioned before, we can see that cupping helps the body to get rid of the waste blood and the ghosts of the red cells, which are called in the Chinese medicine the poisonous blood. The area where cupping is done is known as the area of the hundred diseases in the Chinese medicine. The mechanism of recovery of cupping can be summarized by Firstly, the fact that cupping increases the secretion of natural morphine in the body. In 1962, the scientist Melzak did cupping on a sick rabbit and then he withdrew the spinal fluid, CSF, from the sick rabbit and put it in another sick rabbit and the result was that the pain vanished from the second sick rabbit. Cupping proved that it increases the secretion of natural morphine in the body and it increases also natural cortisone, which was proved by Dr. Majida Amir and Dr. Hani al Ghazawi in Egypt. Secondly, the fact that cupping increases and activates the production of white cells, immune aminoglobulins, and the interferon, which is considered as the first line of defense against cancer cells and viruses. So, it is natural that cupping cures patients from cancer and viral hepatitis. A great medical success attracts the complete attention of all scientific and medical quarters. Recently, cupping became the chief concern of everyone and was the main news in journals, science and medicine magazines as well as other publications, following the reports of its amazing success. This occurred only a few days after the declaration of the laboratory results, confirming the ability of cupping to defy the most incurable of recent diseases. This was not restricted to Arabic countries but extended over the entire world and became the hope of many patients to put an end to their pain and suffering. International circles gave great importance to this discovery to the extent that the British royal family began to correspond with the researchers in Syria in order to determine the method by which haemophilia prevalent among them can be cured. The Syrian medical team performed cupping on Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, the well-known Egyptian writer, in the spring of the year 2004 upon his request. Everyone was surprised by the immediate improvement seen in the patient. This episode encouraged an interesting cupping on the part of many Egyptian doctors. The magazine Nesfa Dunya, which translates as Half of the World, interviewed Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, the aforementioned writer. He spoke about his experience of cupping and how he asked his doctors to adopt the operation of cupping complete with the procedures which had been revived 
by the Syrian scholar Mohammed Amin Shaykh, so as to standardize the art and deter fake or unqualified practitioners. Now cupping is being taught in the universities of 38 American states as an important academic branch. On top of this, Russian hospitals have officially accepted cupping after its therapeutic and preventative effects for many diseases have scientifically been proven.